now we talk about sexual reproduction in animals in animals sexual reproduction also occur just like plants to fertilization of gametes which are called the sperms and the ova sperms in the case of males and ova in the fake case of females gametes are produced in the animals just like all other organisms by the process of meiosis we know that meiosis is reduction division that is when meiosis occur one cell which is a germline cell as we described it um, all of the body cells they do not have ability to um, undergo meiosis only the germ cells have the capability to undergo meiosis when they undergo meiosis um, they uh, they divide into that is one cell one germ cell is divided into four uh, haploid cells that is every cell have a haploid set of chromosomes half number of chromosomes females and males uh, they are usually different in only one pair of chromosomes for example human beings have 46 chromosomes which are in 23 pairs 22 pairs are called the autosomes these pairs just alike in both males and females but the 23rd pair is different females have both X chromosomes in the 23rd pairs which are just like each other just like all other uh, homologous chromosomes but the males uh, have in this 23rd pair one chromosome different from the other one is just like an X but the other is a smaller chromosome which is called Y which have fewer genes but which have some specific genes which causes the organism to become a male that is different from the female organism so males and females they are usually physically different from each other um, and uh, this is actually due to the uh, this specific uh, type of chromosomes frogs for example they carry out sexual reproduction female frogs they have a set of ovaries which produces large number of ova as we know that frogs are the organisms which are part of the group called amphibia in amphibia the organism which are called transition between the aquatic and the land animals so frogs they spend some part of their life in water and some other part of their life in uh, on land for reproduction frogs go to the water frogs uh, the female frogs they have set of ovaries which produces large number of ova and they go to the water and release these ova into the water the male frogs uh, they have uh, testis which produces sperms and these sperms uh, these are uh, laid down on the ova fertilization takes place in water and uh, sperm and ova they join together to form a zygote this zygote then now have a 2n number of chromosomes because sperm have a n number of chromosome and ovum have a n number of chromosome when they join they make a zygote zygote have 2n number of chromosome that is normal number of chromosomes and zygote then divides by mitosis into a stage of life of the frog called larva larva is an actively feeding stage it feeds upon the different types of organisms present in water for example some types of larvae mosquito larvae phytoplankton zooplankton and others and they grow actively after some time they are converted into by a specific process called morphogenesis they are converted into adult frog when they are grown quite well this also takes place by uh, the sexual means that is males and females both organisms are involved human reproduce sexually by fertilization of gametes called sperms and ova males produces sperms and the females produces ova sperms and ova are called gametes gametes are produced by specialized organs called testis and ovaries testis in males and ovaries in females gametes as all of uh, other organisms have a haploid number of chromosomes or we can also say a haploid set of chromosomes that is 23 chromosomes are present in each gamete 22 of these pairs are alike but the 23rd one is different in males and females females have all the 22 uh, autosomal chromosome and an X chromosome but the males uh, we call them a heterogametic sex because uh, they have in some of these ga their gametes uh, 22 autosomes and one X or 22 autosomes and one Y so female always contribute um, an X males contribute either an X or Y so the gender of the child is determined by uh, the male gamete and not by the female gamete. female gamete always contribute an X 
if male gamete have an X, then two X will be complete and a female child will be produced. If the male gamete have a Y chromosome, then the um, autosomal pairs will be 22 and the 23rd pair will be XY and a male child will be produced. So it depends upon the male chromosome that whether it have an X or a Y that female or male child will be produced. Now the basic components of uh, the male reproductive system in human beings. Human male reproductive system consists of a pair of gonads called testes and a system of accessory tubules. Testis, T, E, S, T, I, S, when we say it's for singular. And when we add a E, that is T, E, S, T, E, S, it's plural. That is used for two. Testis are paired, that is two are present. These produce sperms. Testis lie outside the body in a sac called scrotum because spermatogenesis is a process which is highly sensitive to temperature. So uh, these are uh, present, testis are present outside so that temperature is lower. From testis, sperms are transferred to the main duct called vas deferens. Vas deferens is a duct that is um, later on uh, make a complex system of ducts. Vas deferens makes a complex system of ducts upon the surface of testis called epididymis. From epididymis, sperms are transferred through urinogenital duct and then they are dis discharged. Function of the testis. Testis produces sperms. This is their first function. The second function is that they produce a hormone called testosterone. Testosterone is a hormone that uh, produces all the male-like characteristics in an organism. For example, tes testosterone is a very strong anabolic hormone. It affects all the muscles of the body's body and the muscles, uh, they grow better. This is the reason that males usually have uh, more muscles in comparison to female and they have more stronger muscles in comparison to the uh, females because females do not have this hormone. Testosterone also affect many other characteristics like uh, uh, the beard uh, on the face uh, is also uh, enhanced or we can say produced by the effect of testosterone. Testosterone also affect the process of spermatogenesis that is sperm production. Testis consists of a system of tubules. This system is called, these tubules are called seminiferous tubules. In these tubules, there is a epithelium, there are different types of cells. It's from its germinal epithelium, that is from its germ cells, primary spermatocytes are produced. Germ cells actually, uh, we call them germinal epithelium. They divide by mitosis to produce primary spermatocytes. Primary spermatocytes are, have a 2n number of chromosomes because they are divided by mitosis of the sperm mother cells called spermatogonia. Then uh, primary spermatocytes which have 2n number of chromosomes, uh, they undergo meiosis and they produce secondary spermatocytes uh, which have an n number of chromosomes. Secondary spermatocytes further divides and they make spermatids. Spermatids are uh, actually now four because they are produced from uh, secondary spermatocytes which have n number of chromosomes, they also have a n number of chromosome or a haploid set of chromosomes. Uh, spermatids then divide then um, by morphological changes are produced into sperms. Testes also have some large cells called sertoli cells. These sertoli cells nourish the sperms, the developing sperms, their developing stages and they also provide surface and protection to the developing sperms in the seminiferous tubules. When these sperms are uh, uh, mature, when they become mature, they are uh, released into the lumen of the seminiferous tubules from where they move towards the vas deferens. Here this process is uh, exemplified by a diagram. You can see that from spermatogonia or the sperm mother cells, by mitosis, they are divided into primary spermatocytes which have a 2n number of chromosomes. Then meiosis takes place and secondary spermatocytes are formed after first meiotic division and after second meiotic division that occur in both of the secondary spermatocytes, four spermatids are formed and these four spermatids are then modified by different morphological changes into the active sperms. Now we talk about the female reproductive system. Female reproductive system consists of a pair of ovaries and associated system of tubes. Ovaries lies inside the body, uh, in the body cavity and the function of ovaries is to produce ova and to produce some hormone. Ovaries leads to the tubes called oviducts. Oviducts are also called the fallopian tubes sometimes. Oviducts open into the uterus. 
ovum is fertilized into the oviducts, then moves to the uterus where it is implanted. If it is fertilized, then it, it moves towards the uterus and implanted here. Implanted means that it attaches to the wall of the uterus and uh, a placenta a connection is established between the uterine tissues and the tissues of the embryo for the exchange of materials. Uterus is then connected to the vagina through cervix. Now we talk about function of the ovary. Function of the ovaries is to produce ova and female hormones called estrogen progesterone. Estrogen and progesterone are the hormones which affects different processes of female and uh, develop female-like characteristics. Now we talk about the process of oogenesis. Germ cells in the ovary, just like the testis, ovary also have some cells called germ cells. Not all, all the cells of ovary cannot produce an ovum. The germ cells only can produce the ovum. Just like uh, in the testis, the germ cells divide by mitosis into primary oocyte which have a 2n number of chromosomes. That is because it is divided by mitosis, it have the same number of chromosomes as the parent cell have, do have. Then the primary oocyte divides by meiosis. Meiosis occur in the primary oocytes. They are converted to secondary oocyte. Secondary oocyte, because it is produced by meiosis, the first or the first meiotic division of uh, the meiosis, they also have a haploid set of chromosomes. That is half number of chromosomes. There is a difference between um, the male and the female division of gametes, we talk about it later. Then from secondary uh, oocytes, um, two more cells are produced. Three are called polar bodies and one is called ova. Now we look at the diagram to clarify the process. We look at the diagram. First cell which is shown is the ogonium. It is um, produced in, into a primary oocyte because mitosis occur. Uh, in the ogonium, the result is a primary oocyte which have a 2n number of chromosomes. Then primary oocyte divides by meiosis 1 and because it is divided by meiosis 1 which is a reduction division, it is converted into two haploid cells. But here is a difference. One cell is larger than other cell. As you can see in the diagram, the secondary oocyte, uh, one cell is very large and the other cell is very small. The large one is called a secondary oocyte and the other one is called a polar body. What is the difference between two? Secondary oocyte have large quantity of cytoplasm and a half set of chromosomes. But the polar body have a half set of chromosomes, but it have very small quantity of uh, cytoplasm. Then the second meiotic division takes place in secondary oocyte and in this polar body we call it a first polar body. When secondary oocyte is divided into two by meiotic division, it makes an ovum or an egg and another polar body. That is, by meiosis 2, one ovum is produced or an egg is produced and the other polar body is produced. Again, there is the same difference. That is, ovum have a large quantity of cytoplasm and the polar body have small quantity of cytoplasm. The first polar body also divide by the same way by meiosis 2 uh, into two polar body. All of these polar bodies, they are actually wasted away and only the ovum uh, which is produced is uh, used in further process uh, of fertilization and making the zygote. So uh, actually in a male from one cell four uh, sperms are produced but in females from one cell one ovum and three polar bodies are produced. Three are wasted away and one only is used. When this is uh, released from the ovary, egg is released from the ovary, we call this process ovulation. This was about the uh, reproductive systems in different types of organisms. Um, we talked about um, that, that why reproduction is important. We talked about different methods of reproduction, asexual reproduction, uh, which occur by various methods. Then we talk about the sexual reproduction in plants, uh, in particularly higher plants, in animals and uh, in human beings. 